Three days, three deadly back-to-back -back mass shootings here in California. First in Monterey Park, then in Half Moon Bay, where seven more innocent lives were gunned down, leaving another Asian American community reeling. Still no motives in either case, where both suspects are older Asian men, atypical of what we've come to expect in the profile of a mass shooter. Joining us now to discuss is retired LAPD Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. Good morning, Sergeant. Nice to see you. Good morning, Giselle. So here we are again. Three mass shootings in just three days. California has some of the strictest gun laws in the nation. But as strict as they are, they are not working. Give us your thoughts this morning as we deal with one mass shooting after the other. You know, it's really heartbreaking. And, and what I think we need to be mindful of now is that we have to advocate for ourselves because what we thought was the uh, typical, you know, normal, if you will, uh, mass shooter, there is no such thing. Uh, we're seeing elderly senior citizens now mimic what we thought was a young male white kind of situation. And so we have to be mindful everywhere we are because it can happen anywhere and everywhere and, and anyone can perpetrate on us. And so thankfully we had a young man who had the presence of mind to see something and in this case do something in Monterey to prevent further tragedies from occurring in Alhambra similar to oh. what happened in Monterey. Yeah, that uh, young man was a hero for sure. So Asian Americans have been experiencing a rise in hate crimes during the pandemic. This, as we've also seen, 43% rise in Asian American gun ownership over the last two years. Do you see a direct correlation? Well, you know, for me, this is not a typical hate crime because this is, you know, Asian on Asian, if you will. This is someone uh, in, in both instances, I believe, who had angst and animus uh, with individuals uh, whom they targeted specifically. And so I, I don't think this can be lumped into that general category of um, a hate crime situation in terms of guns that, you know, people possess. We now know that the Monterey uh, Park, California shooter had this illegal weapon in California now, but I mean, he purchased this years ago. So, you know, the horse is out of the barn, um, the guns are out there, the extended clip um, magazines are out there. And so we just have to be mindful and look for anything that seems suspicious. When you're in a large public gathering now, it doesn't matter the community, there is no safe community, and we not should not feel safe because I think complacency kills. Yeah, churches, schools, synagogues, no one feels safe anymore. It's part of the American culture as we know it. But Sergeant, when you don't have what we have come to expect, the white disenfranchised young male with a diatribe on social media as warning signs, when none of that exists, not even a really strong criminal record, how do you even try and guard against this kind of attack? Well, you know, I, I would imagine that we'll find out later on when these investigations uh, wrap up that there were probably red flags in both instances. Uh, Half Moon Bay uh, seems like a workplace issue. Certainly we know now that the Monterey Park shooter had a relationship uh, with that community, uh, with those venues in particular. And it's reported that he even taught dance lessons at uh, the Monterey Park location. And so uh, I would imagine that there was someone who's close to these people, much like somebody who out there right now might be brewing and stewing over an issue and has uh, lamented to a friend or a family member their angst. And so if you have someone talking to you in a way that makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, follow that inner man, girl, child that's speaking to you, follow that sixth sense and say something to someone. Yeah. I think we should err on the cost of talking to people, taking their guns rather than have something happen and then say, oh yeah, I thought he might do that. Right. Um, let's talk Monterey Park for a minute, the deadliest mass shooting in the U.S. since Uvalde. But unlike Uvalde, the interagency response has been praised for their quick coordination. Talk to us about the efficiency of this tactical response, and should it be a model for the rest of the nation? Well, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, part and parcel is that LASD is a large agency, much like LAPD, you know, and I, I'd like to think that they are, like we are, uh, some of the best trained officers and deputies uh, that Southern California certainly has to offer. And so we saw uh, precision and discipline in terms of the SWAT officers who ended this uh, situation in Torrance 
um, successfully, if you will, while well, the suspect took himself out. But uh, the way that the agencies interacted and reported information, everyone who uh, was patrolling, I'm sure that early Sunday morning was looking and stopping every white van that they saw to uh, find this suspect who was still at that point at large. And so this is what we train for, this is what we do. And when officers rely on their training and tactically deploy, we have these kinds of conclusions. Right. So the warrant into Hugh Cantran's home in Hemet found an absolute arsenal of more weapons, hundreds of rounds of ammunition, and additional homemade firearm suppressors. What's the implication there? Was he planning more attacks or manufacturing for sale? What does that tell you? I think he was planning more attacks. I think obviously the fact that he went to two locations within proximity, 20 minutes apart, lets you know that he intended to inflict great bodily harm and injury on anyone and everyone that he encountered. And so, um, you know, I don't know if we can really look to him uh, going forward because he doesn't really fit the profile. He's an elderly man. I bet you there's no social media presence to help us understand uh, in advance what it was he was planning and prepping, probably didn't have very many friends, probably a loner, elderly man, but certainly he was he was uh, intent. And you know, we always hear mental illness. This is not mental illness. This is someone who was uh, lucid and clear uh, and determined about what it was he was gonna do. Yeah, and we have the some of the strictest gun laws in the country. Everybody keeps saying this in the wake of these mass shootings, and yet it's not working. Diane Feinstein, Senator, and others are resubmitting now legislation to ban assault rifles and raise the minimum wage to purchase firearms to 21 years of age. How likely is it enough? Or are the loopholes too great a gap? I don't say no to anything, but as I said earlier, you know, the horse is out of the barn. Uh, the Monterey Park shooter had possessed and purchased uh, that weapon, it's reported decades ago, I mean, before the ban even existed. And so you can't unring that bell. And that's why it's important when we're out, we need to be paying attention to what's going on around us. If there's someone there that looks a little suspicious, we call it acting hinky um, in the law enforcement profession. Um, be aware of exits. Talk to your family members, talk to your children specifically. We had a six-year-old just very recently take a gun to school. And so our children and grandchildren need to know what to do if they find themselves in an active shooter situation. We've seen toddlers in video um, waving guns around that their parents did not have locked away appropriately. All right, so 88% of Americans support universal background checks. We've seen assault weapon bans work in countries like New Zealand and others. Yet from Sandy Hook to Uvalde to now, nothing moves the needle. You've been at this a long time. Are you hopeful for change? I'm a realist and I, I don't see how we change what's already out there. You know, people who are in possession of these high powered uh, weapons, uh, multi-capacity magazines, they have them. And you don't know what would trigger someone, uh, what would cause them to act. You know, I don't know if the Half Moon Bay shooter was a copycat because there was a lot of attention given down here in Southern California. He thought, hmm, that sounds like a good idea. Why don't I try it up here? Sometimes I wonder if all of what we see on the news is stuff that we really need to know. Well, that is the question for the ages, isn't it? And always Absolutely. one posed by, by your great mind, retired LAP Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. Thank you so much for joining us and lending us your expertise on this very tragic situation. We appreciate thank you. you. Thank you.